Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I thought I would do a little sit down video just to give my tips on how I manage to stay organised as a PhD student. I've had a few of you ask me some questions on my Instagram page about how I keep organised in terms of lab meetings and uh, my lab notes and how I just keep organised on a day to day basis. So I thought I would just run through all of my best tips and hints uh, in this video today. So let's start off with to do lists. On a daily basis, I think it's really, really important to have a to-do list. And going even further than that, I actually like to plan my weeks a week in advance. So I like to have an overview of what I need to do on Monday, what I need to do on Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on and so forth. So what I use for planning my weeks is a planner called Zinnia. So Zinnia is a digital planner that you can download if you have an iPad. I'm not sure if you can get it on computer, I'm afraid. I think it's for iPad and iPhone users only. Zinnia is a great planner because you can customize it to your needs. My preferred way of using the spread that I made up in Zinnia is to write my to-do list on one side of the page and then on the other side I have spaces for Monday to Friday where I then transfer over my to-do list items into the allocated days in order to just see what I need to do every day of the week. I always make my to-do list on a Friday and that means that I can just go and enjoy my weekend and not have to think about what I need to do the week after and I won't look at my to-do list again until Monday morning or sometimes Sunday evening. So it just means I have peace of mind over the weekend knowing that my week is completely planned and everything is already organised, ready to go come Monday morning. In order to keep myself even more organised, what I like to do is every morning I will sit down and actually time block all the tasks that I have to do on a different spread. Time blocking is essentially when you, when you block out time for each of your tasks on your to-do list. For example, I might block in 9 o'clock until 10 o'clock, catch up on emails. This just means that I have a bit more structure to my day, I know exactly what time and how long I have to complete each of my tasks, which just keeps me a bit more motivated, a bit more productive and I think a bit more on track. Another thing I like to do when I'm planning my projects and my tasks is to create a monthly overview. Again, I like to use my Zinnia planner for this. What I do for my monthly overview is that I take the calendar with all the days and the dates and I like to block in what tasks or what main goals I have for the month. This means that I can quickly at a glance see what I have on in the month, if I have an important conference for example, and it gives me an indication of how many days I have to prepare for this conference. It's also really useful for me to block in any time off I have, which is quite rare, <laughs> because then it lets me know how many weeks or how many days I have left to get my tasks done before I go on my holidays. One reason I really like the Zinnia Planner is because it's digital and it means that I can have it on my phone and I can have it on my iPad. So if I am stressed about what I need to do next, I can just look at my phone and I will have my answers straight away. So the next questions I had was how I organise my notes. So I think first of all, let's start off with how I organise my lab notes in particular. In my university, we use a traditional lab notebook in order to write up our experiments and what we have completed and our data analysis also. And here is my lab notebook in all of its glory. One of my top tips regarding your lab notebook would be to fill it out at the end of every day and fill it out in as much detail as possible. One thing that I found really useful is if I literally write down every single little step of my experiment that I did, every single concentration or every single time period, because it means when you look back on your lab notes later on, you're not thinking, but how long did I do this for? Or how much volume of this reagent did I use? Because all the details are down on paper. Also, like I said, I think it's really important to write up your lab notebook at the end of each day. This just means that what you did in the day is fresh in your mind. So it's easy for you to recall the details and just jot them all down. It also means that later on, you don't have to catch up on lots and lots of writing up in your lab notebook. Another thing I like to do to keep my lab notebook organized is to use colored tabs. So as you can see here, I have these colored tabs at the top of my notebook and these are just used to kind of help me quickly access projects and I've just sectioned off different experiments and things um, again just so I can easily access them because when you're using a book it can sometimes be quite difficult to find what you need if you're flicking through it. I would say I'm pretty good at keeping on top of my lab notebook however one thing that does really annoy me is that all of my data is on the computer 
and I have to print it off and stick it into my lab notebook. One thing that I'm really trying to do is to convert to an electronic lab book. So I'm going to have a discussion with my supervisor soon to see if he is okay with that. So an electronic lab book will basically just be that all of my experiments, all of my data will be in a Word document and that will be my lab book. This is an important thing to consider when you're starting a PhD, whether you want a traditional lab book or whether you want to do an electronic lab book. But it's also a discussion that you need to have with your supervisor as there might be certain regulations in, at your university or within your department. The next thing I'd like to discuss is how I keep track of notes from meetings. This could be notes from meetings with a supervisor or maybe notes with a collaborator or maybe notes from a group meeting, for example. Meetings can be quite overwhelming sometimes as maybe you're discussing new experiment ideas or fine details of experiments. So I find it's really important to keep track of everything that you discuss. One thing I like to do during my meetings is to take notes as we're having the discussion. So whether that's through a Zoom call and or a Teams meeting and I'm typing up notes or whether it's taking a physical notebook along to meetings with your supervisor. This just helps to not forget any important points which were mentioned during the meeting. Another good tip I have is to make a summary of what you discussed in your meeting. For example, if it's with your supervisor, make a summary of what they have asked you to do or what you have suggested to do next and type it all up in an email and send it over to your supervisor. This means that your supervisor also has a record of what you discussed and if you picked up any information incorrectly they, they can then correct you and send it back to you and say actually no I didn't say this I actually said this. What I tend to do in my email summaries is I put down just in bullet points of what I discussed so typically during the meetings with my supervisor I go over the results that I collected over the last two weeks and I also say what my plans are for the next two weeks and then I put a little summary of any other general things that we discussed. It's really useful to have this account of what you discussed in the meeting because then you can look back on it before your next meeting and make sure you did everything in the to-do list that your supervisor has asked you to do or just to make sure you didn't miss any important points for your next experiments for example. And finally I would like to show you how I make notes on papers. This was another thing that was quite highly requested um, to show my note taking process and how I read papers so I'll just go into that now. As I mentioned in my last video, I quite like using Notion for tracking my papers now. Originally, when I would read papers, I would type out all of my notes into a Word document. However, with my newfound love for Notion, I have found a much better way to keep track of all of my notes. I am still in the process of transferring over my notes from the Word documents into my Notion spread. However, this is how I intend to do it when my Notion page is properly set up. So my spread in particular that I have created has multiple columns just to keep everything organised. The first column being the paper name and then I have a section for me to make a quick summary just so I can see a, at a glance what the paper is actually about. Also I have put a category section so this means that I can easily and quickly search for papers of a specific genre or on a specific topic. Again keywords is a similar column with a similar purpose just so I can see at a glance what types of topics that the paper is on. I have a space for the link in case I want to try and find it again if I haven't downloaded it. And then my, the most important section, which is the notes section. So here I just transfer over all my notes that I have taken and put them in here in bullet point form so I can see what is the most important information at a glance. When I'm actually reading papers, I don't like to print them out because I don't really like to waste paper and I like to do things digitally. So I actually import my papers to GoodNotes, uh, which is the app that I use for taking notes on my iPad. I have the big iPad, so I think it's the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And this is the perfect A4 size for reading papers, in my opinion. If anyone would like a video on how I use my iPad Pro for my PhD and what apps I like to use, please let me know and I'll be happy to do that in the future. So I like to import my papers to GoodNotes and then I use the highlighter function in order to highlight any interesting information or important information. I also use my Apple Pencil to write definitions of words at the side, which I might not know, and also to make summaries of paragraphs at the side. From the notes on my iPad, I transfer them into my Notion spreadsheet so I can see all of my notes at a glance and I can search for the papers accordingly. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I hope that was a useful video just kind of showing you how I like to stay organised as a PhD student and maybe you've learned something new that you're now going to implement into your PhD. 
If there's any other videos you would like to see me do in the future, please do let me know in the comment section below. And thank you again so much for watching. I will see you all next time. Bye.